Ready to rock. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Against the Ropes. I am Gio Garcia. I am alongside Christian Mosqueda. Episode 73. 73. Or something like that, right? We're getting up there. Yeah, I thought, 70, I thought it was 75, 74. Not Woo! 73. It's up there. We're getting up there, man. <laughs> excited for this one um we have a lot a lot of stuff to talk about in a short period of time so we're gonna try to make this quick and exciting for the listeners right yeah so uh, we got something important coming up friday uh if hopefully you're listening to this before uh friday before valentine's day i know some of y'all are gonna be on dates and stuff romantic dates <laughs> romantic walks down the beach if it's warm you know but listen to the podcast hopefully hopefully listen to this before friday because friday all-star boxing is going down yeah and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great night of action man like always it's a small venue you know quiet cannon montebello california quiet but it doesn't get to it's not really that there's nothing quiet about the (laughs) quiet cannon yeah no it's gonna be an an action-packed event man can a cannon be quiet I, I suppose they can, right, with the new technology? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Interesting questions that arise during the Against the Rose podcast. We're glad to be back. Um, so, yeah, that's happening Friday. It's going to be us doing the ringside commentary, and Mr. Alex Fernandez will be joining us. So mm-hmm. we're excited for that. Yeah. Big shout-out to Mr. Alex Fernandez. He's been on the podcast before. Um, he's high-energy dude. No, for real. So, man, it should be fun. Uh, that's just contagious, man. He Ooh, just brings it. Is. it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. It's a little bit of Blair Cobb's energy there that he brings yeah. along. And Quick story about Alex. I met him at Venice Beach during the open workout for Soaring Visa against El, Gallito, El Gallo Estrada. Mm-hmm. Um, he was interviewing uh, Danny Roman. And you know okay. Danny Roman is kind of like oh, laid back, quiet. chill. Very chill. And yeah. um, Alex went after me. He did okay. the interview after me. Okay. And he was just high energy. <laughs> Talk about high energy. This guy was doing like hand gestures. Uh-huh. And he was being... Um, you can say loud in a good way, uh-huh. you know, and I looked at myself, I was like, damn. I remember that. Yeah. I, I want to do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to do over with Danny Roman with I remember, this interview. Yeah, I remember I should... your message where you are like, yeah, I was like, how did the yeah. interview go? Because you're not, you weren't used to being out in the field uh, uh-huh. back then. You are like, no, oh, I went well, it went good. Like, he's like, but there's this one there guy. This guy. <laughs> there's this one guy. Made me rethink my whole approach. Yeah. But yeah, no. That was did, cool. You this did good, man. You did good. Yeah. Just, and you know, he was one of the... F- First, he was probably the first guy that ever came up to me. Was like, "Hey, you're from Against the Ropes, huh?" Uh, okay. And I started tripping out. I was like, "How do you know us?" Because mm-hmm. this was what April of last year. Yeah. Right. We were like oh. six months in, mm-hmm. seven maybe eight, like six months in, and yeah, he was like, "You're from Against the Ropes, son." I was tripping out. Like, what? Oh shit. Okay. Me? Who's looking for me? <laughs> I was about to run, dude. You it's know, like, in the hood, if, if when people say, are you so-and-so, you got to run. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, I knew we were making noise, but not that yeah. much noise, right? So Yeah, so that was pretty cool, and okay. we've been in contact ever since. He's been part of the show, and he's going to be joining us uh, this Friday, February 14th. I know it's going to be a busy Friday, like yeah. like we said, Valentine's Day. Uh, Danny, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ryan Garcia is fighting Friday as well. There's some fights on the zone. There's All-Star Weekend, I believe. For NBA, yeah, right. So there's a lot of stuff, man. So, man, if you can join us, we'll be very, very thankful. Yeah, I and mean, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be like kind of bouncing from the zone to ours, you know, in between the yeah. rules. We'll, we'll be filling you with some information that's going on over there on the zone cards. Yeah, asking for your opinions, what's going down, which if you like what you see, all that good stuff, man. Yeah, we'll be on our phones, our laptops, and we'll uh, we'll be on the comment section too. So, oh yeah, if you're Watching All Star Boxing while watching any other sporting events, whether it's boxing or NBA, let us know because we want to stay updated as well and we want to chat it up with you guys on that comment section. Yeah, yeah. And uh, next week we're gonna have um, one boxer from the All Star uh, card. Uh, as some of you may know, we had one boxer last week who's gonna be fighting this Friday, mm-hmm. Eloy Secundino. Very good episode. 
um check it out if you haven't uh it was very good i was impressed like i told him you know i was like it was a very ple- pleasant uh surprise yeah i'm um, having and that's the thing that we get on this on this podcast right we kind of like take yeah. out the layers because these guys are not just boxers man they're uh-huh. brothers you know he was a father i didn't know up until yeah until and he, he got in. his heart broken and all this yeah, stuff i was, man, like, I was Whoa. like my brother you gotta get that you gotta get that <laughs> oh you feel him <laughs> Oh man, like, tell us more. I was like, no, 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 you gotta get that W, man. He's, uh, he's yeah, fighting yeah. on Valentine's Day, man. Yeah, but you know what? Like, he, yeah, he he opened up, and that's what I like when people yeah. come up here and they just pour their hearts out, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, we're gonna have um, uh, Martin Saldana next mm-hmm. week. He's normally the headliner for All Star Boxing. Yeah. Uh, we had Eloy last week. He's gonna be fighting on that card as well, mm-hmm. and we're gonna have uh, another boxer professional boxer next weekend um we met him early on in his career and we'll get to talking a little bit right now we're gonna give him a call but he'll be here next weekend live in the studio i know he lives a little far so um try to accommodate for him and he should be here next week but i'm gonna give him a call right now while you entertain the fans hey there (laughs) we go man so oh hey oh hey oh hey got this all right so we knock, we're talk- knock 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you know i'll talk a little bit uh, a little bit about the um the the zone fight you know this friday mm-hmm. again it's a uh, ryan uh garcia taking on francisco fonseca el kicking no it's not el kicking it's, right soccer it's not kicking. <laughs> soccer people it's, get that joke it's, it is not kicking it's all another, right it's another another <laughs> fonseca. fonseca yeah <laughs> and uh you guys could check out some of the footage chris was there uh this whole week right you were yeah. Dude, everywhere. you were on the clock. I was on the clock. I was out there for the uh, the open workout. Yeah, and it's the first time I get to see uh, Ryan Garcia actually yes. sh- show off his speed. And uh, dude, I was impressed. You were impressed. I was very impressed. All you right. see that speed on on video, but you're like, you know, what? I, I want to see it with my my own two eyes. And very impressed with the speed. Yeah, it, it's got a good a good uh, arsenal of uh, weapons. So I got to interview him. Yeah, he get, he check out um the the uh, the interview guys. He leaves a little. Uh, a little bit of pebbles advice for the youth yeah and you guys could check all that stuff out at against da ropes on instagram twitter facebook and against the ropes podcast on uh youtube so check that out for sure um that is the zone february 14th friday all right what else we got what else we got? What time? The uh the first bout for All Star Boxing is what at? I think you told me eight p.m. 8 p.m.? Yeah, that probably means nine. So if you're on the <laughs> East Coast, sorry, um, but you know you know how it goes. But but that's cool, right? Because it's a Friday. It's a Friday. Friday. It's gonna be a lot of traffic. I mean, the only thing that sucks is that you know they picked this. Uh, it was it falls on the same day that the DAZN, uh Ryan Garcia fight falls happens. in. So I mean, it happens. You just yeah. gotta go with it. Um. Would have loved to have been at both events. Wish it would have been a Friday, Saturday, whichever yeah. way. But uh, it is what it is, you know. Um, gives you Saturday, uh, you know. Yeah, because Ryan is here at the Honda Center in Anaheim. Yeah, yeah. So um, I remember Canelo as well had a fight here in Anaheim. So that kind of that blueprint is there, right? They're kind of going uh, in a similar path. Uh, Ryan Garcia, 19 and 0, of course. Un- yeah, no. So I, I was also able to interview Mr. Uh, Eddie Reynoso, Canelo's mm-hmm. trainer. If you guys know, uh, he gave me some some good insight Ooh. into into the development of, okay. uh, of Ryan. Okay. And so and uh, I, I did ask him some tough questions. I was like, okay, you you've already told me what. Yeah. You know he's improved on. Let me know. Like, tell me what he what else he needs. Uh, you know to work on. And he gave me some 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 good pointers. He gave you some gems. Some gems, man. And so uh, yeah, I mean uh. Ryan, Ryan, if you've noticed, he has improved drastically since joining the uh, the Canelo team with Eddie Reynoso, Chet Bo Reynoso, and uh, I mean, just excited to see what you know how he takes on uh, this opponent and Francisco Fonseca, who's been in there with with some good good name opponents, yeah. as in Tevin Farmer, uh, Jermonta Tank Davis, and so yeah, I, I like five two and two, mm-hmm. right? I like the confidence that Fon- that Fonseca showed. You know, he's he straight out says he's no pushover. I know we've heard this from previous opponents, but you yeah. know you can see the the focus on his face, and yeah. he's he's ready. Hopefully, he's that's ready. the case, man. Yeah, Ryan, uh, he needs a test at this point of his career, especially if he wants to move on to guys like Linares, right? Experience. Mm-hmm. The name of Gervonta Davis is being thrown out there, but um, yeah, I feel like more than anything, he just needs that experience, right, against experienced fighters. Do you have a prediction for that? For Ryan, mm-hmm. you know what? 
I'm going to predict a knockout for Ryan. I'm going to predict a knockout yeah. um, because I was very impressed with what he did last fight. Yeah. Um, he showed some true power. That's that's power right there. Yeah. yeah. Like a first round knockout. Yeah. That's power right there. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say knockout for Ryan. Um and and I feel like he needs it if he wants to keep, you know, naming, you know, Gervonta and Jorge Linares and Devin Haney and all these guys. Yeah, no, that fight with with uh, with Romero Duno, I don't think nobody expected it to be this soon. This early that knockout. We kind of knew that uh, that uh, maybe uh, Romero Duno wasn't at that level, but we didn't know how how drastically Ryan had improved. And I was I was kind of hope I was thinking it was gonna go over six rounds at least. But yeah. you see that improvement, and you see how soon that knockout came. He did say that he didn't think he was gonna knock him out with that punch that early uh, at the uh, press conference uh, when we were interviewing him at the open workout. I mean, yeah. But uh, he's all like, "This just it just shows like my improvement," and so. That 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 shot landed and and Romero Duno was no more. Yeah, what do you think about Jorge Linares coming back? I like that he's coming back. You know, he he fell to one of our previous guests uh, in Paulo Cesarcano. Yep. A fight that many people thought he was gonna, you know, pretty much beat Paulo Cesarcano. It seemed like uh, at that point in, in their careers, Linares had mostly everything going for him. Like he had maybe one of his best fights today. E even in losing to Lomachenko, he dropped the the. Yeah. The mythical matrix fighter you know and uh so people really didn't think yeah you know but uh again uh i think he's coming he's, he's got he's fought since then since that loss and he's had a couple of wins and he looks like he's in the best shape yeah so seeing him up close you're like okay yeah this guy's fit he's ready again they're throwing that name of ryan if they are to come out victorious that 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 could be the next fight yeah so but he needs that w he, he needs that w for sure and he's fighting yeah. uh, a previous ryan garcia opponent in uh in the solution <laughs> And so that's gonna be a good fight, man. That is gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a good fight. Um, you know, if I, if if Jorge Linares was here, I would ask him. Um, Cause man, I just wonder, like, you're going from dropping Lomachenko, right? Yeah. Almost beating him, like. Yeah. Uh, what a uh, guy who most people consider the top pound for pound fighter in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, to you know going up to 140 and then getting knocked out, destroyed. Yeah. By Paulo Cesar Cano, yeah. right? Like, man, that's got to mess with your head a little bit. Um, and we, we'll see what his comeback is about. Let's see if it's real. Let's see if um, he can stay at that level. And uh, because at, at that age, I feel like they start using these guys as a stepping stone. Like, yeah. as harsh as that sounds, it's the truth. Yeah. Right? It's the truth. So that's what I hear when they're trying to say Ryan Garcia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to use him as a stepping stone. So we'll see what, what he's all about in this uh, in this fight. And we kind of felt that in the in the uh, in today's conference. Oh, you really? Kinda, you kind of felt, you know, Ryan hinting like hmm. he he said he's not looking past his opponent, but yeah. he's like, I know people are thinking me and Linares are coming next and stuff. And you can tell that not as, you know, he's no he's no fool. He knows if you know that he is a name. He knows that he's a name that you know that that Ryan needs. And his resume to kind of build that credibility, yeah, and and to kind of silence a little bit of those naysayers. But uh, yeah. Nunez is a live dog. He's a yeah. In my opinion, and I'll ask you this: Do you do you feel like he's a future Hall of Famer? They think he's done enough to be Linares. a future Hall of Famer. Linares. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm gonna say yes because everybody gets into the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> Not everybody. I don't know if Adrian Broner is gonna get in, Bruh. or Amir Khan's gonna get in. What do you Man. think? Those are the Amir. Amir. I think Amir. Well, because I feel like international okay. uh, fighters always get it's a little, a little easier for them, okay. you know, just like the NBA. <laughs> but Adrian Broner, nah, Adrian Broner won't. I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, -uh. four division titles. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Let's so talk Cobbs, dude. Let's talk Cobbs. Flair the Flair, because he's on this card too, right? He's gonna yeah. be a stack card, like we said. All right, we have Matt. Oh, Mr. Matt on the line. Gavers here. So we're going to go ahead and take this call from Mr. Matt. How's it going, Matt? Hey, it's going good. How's it going, guys? All good, all good. You are live on air, my man. Hey. That's right. What's <laughs> up? What's up, man? What you been up to? Oh, man. I've just been uh, working, trying to, trying to provide and uh, just uh, trying to take the right fights, you know? Trying to. Mm hmm. I hear you. Trying to take care of my career as best as i can you know yeah 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 you know what man you were 
initially you were scheduled to fight this Friday, right? February 14th, All-Star Boxing. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. And yes, they, sir, I was. And they moved you on to, a, to another date, right? Yes, sir, they did. They moved me to February 29th, actually, in um, San Mateo, up in the Bay. Okay. And that fight, actually, I had to pull out of because I had a knee injury in a sparring session, and so I had to pull out for that. But my knee is, is recovering well, and um, I actually just got a fight uh, lined up for, uh, what is it, uh, April 3rd here okay. in, uh, in uh, San Ynez at the Shumash Casino against a guy named uh, Pajardo Alvarez. Okay. Okay. How frustrating is that, man? You finally had a date settled and and you get that injury. How frustrating is that? Man, you know, it's it's uh it is it's frustrating. Uh, you know, getting getting having setbacks come along in in my career, but I just got to take it as everything happens for a reason. You know what? God's God's letting things happen to me. Uh maybe maybe that's not what he wanted for my career, you know. So I don't know, you know, I look, I think of it as, you know, he's the ultimate decider of, you know, my life, my career, and I, I got to trust, I got to trust the process and just trust him, you know. For sure. Man, look, let me, let me tell the people a little bit about um, how we met you and, and why you were going to be on the podcast next week, right? You're going to be here in the studio. I uh, want to thank you for that first and foremost, but, you know, we saw Matt fighting. It was at the Commerce Casino, right? Yeah. Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Commerce Casino. He was fighting against uh, the Colombiano, right? Yep. Very fami yeah. familiar with us. John uh, Sanchez John, Leon. John Sanchez Leon. Um, very tough fight. We were there doing the ringside commentary. Very close fight, mm -hmm. right? Very Some people fight. thought may Matt maybe was, you know, yeah. was going to edge that one out. Uh, yeah. It ended in a, st in a stoppage, right? It, yeah, it was early a stoppage. stoppage early early stoppage. For, I think that's something that we yeah. echoed. And, you know, one of our friends was there. Uh, shout out to Gut. He was there, you know, he watches boxing, but he's not the most avid fan, let's say, mm -hmm. right? He just likes combat sports in general, but he was there watching the fight. And then when we ran into Matt down at the lobby, he went up to Matt mm -hmm. just to say, like, respect, because um, we, we all saw it was a very good fight. Yeah. And like we said, he might have been up on the scorecards, mm -hmm. and he, he just got the short end of that stick, but he just went up there and showed, you know, showed some respect, and we went over, too, and said, what's up, and... and because he, Matt was undersized too in that oh, yeah. fight. Yeah. He was undersized. Mm -hmm. He was kind of like the matchmaking. That's John Sanchez Lone is not a guy you want to fight, you know, early on in your career. Yeah. But um, we just want to show respect to Matt. And um, we've been in touch ever since. And you will be here next week, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think I think that that decision had a little bit uh, to do in, in, in my fault, uh, you know, with, you know, me being in the early stages of my career, not picking the right fights. Right. Yeah. You know, I took mm -hmm. that fight at 147 and my mm -hmm. my weight class is is 140 and at the lightweight division. And actually, this fight coming up is going to be at 138. Um, okay. You know, there's, there's a couple of pounds that might it might affect me because I have more of a muscular build, but mm -hmm. uh strict diet this camp and i'm definitely gonna be going about this uh the right way um you know i, I faced two fighters I've, i fought uh omar juarez um early on in my career uh on pbc on fox and uh i thought that i won that fight too you know i, I kind of got robbed on that and he knows that he lost i've reached out to him you know wanting the rematch and i mean he won't even message me back so hmm. No. Yeah. And, you know, this is a interesting story because this is what happens a lot in boxing. Right. Yeah. This is the stories that people don't get to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that stuff mentioned, not to mention that Johnson Sanchez Leon is about six feet tall yeah. and he's fighting at 147. Right. He's a big 147. But uh, we just kind of wanted to get that story out there a little bit, man. Uh, we appreciate Matt. And, uh, you know, we, we thank you because you're going to be here next week. Right. I'm going to go ahead and pass yes, the phone yes, to my man Chris here. Uh, you have any questions yeah. for Matt? Here we go. What's up, Matt? Hey, how you doing, Chris? Doing good, brother. Not really questions, but more more comments uh, than anything. Uh, I remember uh, uh, there was uh, some other coaches right there in, in, in attendance that day when you fought John Sanchez Leon. And right before the fight, I, heard them, I overheard them saying, like, oh, this kid's tough. 
this kid's gonna give uh, John Sanchez some trouble. Like he's he's good. And so uh, I overheard that, and then I saw that coming to fruition. You're fighting a very good fight. You're a very high volume puncher. Uh, you stay very busy. So um, yeah, after seeing your record, I was a little surprised. I was like, this kid's this kid's too good. Yeah. To have that record. You know. I so that yeah. Lot. Yeah. Well. So. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I, I think we did echo after the fight. I was like, he probably just needs to look back at his team uh, and see uh, what decisions he's making and uh, and the type of opponents he's taking. Cause um. Yeah, we were very, we were adamant in saying like, oh, he's taking on some pretty good fighters, you know, very early on in his career, and I think he's too talented to, you know, to to be fighting these guys just yet. But um, but yeah, that's something I could. I was like, I like how he fights. He's you know, he's definitely somebody that we're gonna follow, support. Fan friendly. Yeah, yeah, fan friendly for sure. And so um, my question is um, or not not my question, but my my comment is like, there's been other fighters. Um, one one fighter that comes to mind is uh, Sora Ringbusai, who started his career. A little bit just like you, Matt. Uh, he took three, four losses very early on in his career, but you know that didn't deter him. That didn't deter him, and he he came to be, you know, on the pound for pound list, dethroning Chocolatito, you know, uh, a couple years ago. And so, um, yeah, for me, it would be say like, don't 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 stop it. This is what you love. This is your passion. Just keep at it. You know, um, we'll definitely. I'm gonna say some questions for when you come into studio. Yeah, this is just a teaser, people. <laughs> this is just a teaser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'll save my questions for you for when you come into studio. And uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I can't honestly. After after that fight, I was like, yeah, we gotta definitely gotta follow this kid because he's he's a talent for sure. I appreciate that, guys. Much respect to you guys. You guys are all great people, and and I I knew that uh, I knew that the moment that we had that conversation outside commerce, and uh, I pre I respect you guys highly, and I can't wait to give uh, give the people a, a good. Uh, a good conversation and a good show uh, next week. Hey. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, real quickly, where can we follow Matt? Where can we follow you, Matt? Tell the people. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Real Matt Gaver, and uh, on Facebook, uh, just look up Matt Gaver. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Right. I don't have a Twitter, so you just gotta follow me on Instagram. Um, but I'm training right now out of Santa Maria, California, at the Baldera School of Boxing. And, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm located right now. Okay. All right, that's what's up. And like Chris said, we're going to save, you know, most of our good stuff for next <laughs> week, man. Thank you for taking this call. Any last message that you want to send to uh, all the listeners right now listening to this? Man, I, everybody just uh, just put God first, and uh, that's it, man. And just, just put God first, and hey. everything else will fall into place. All right, all right. That's what's up. Uh, one last question. Um, I don't know if you were a big fan of Kobe or not, but um, just want to get your thoughts on that a little bit. Man, uh, that that uh, that affected me uh, deeper than I think you know any of uh, any rapper like passing away. I mean, no, not taking anything away from like who they anybody else was, but I think more so just because of like how suddenly just like somebody like that passed away and the other innocent lives and just just the the tragicness of that uh man seeing how it affected it, all the whole community and how how he had such an Im impact on everybody else just really kind of resonated in me and just made me realize like wow you know no man is promised tomorrow you know and uh it really just kind of made me actually take a second and, and, and reevaluate how I'm living my life saying I'm no longer going to rush through life, you know, every move, every, every day, I'm going to kind of slow down and enjoy the small things in life. I'm taking a drive, you know, even if it's, yeah. you know, to the bank, I'm just going to enjoy, enjoy my day. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be in a hurry no more. And Definitely. So, yeah. You know, All right, man. Anyways. Yeah. That's yeah. About it. Yeah. We're thank you once again for taking this call. We'll have you next week. We're excited for that one, man. Thank you. Can't wait to see you, man. Take care, my man. Awesome. God bless. Bye, right. guys. Thank you. Bye. All right, man. That was Matt Gaver. All right, Matt Gaver. We're going to have him in studio uh, next week. Next week he's going to be here um, blessing our mics. And you know what? Talking about Kobe to stay on topic, uh, Ryan kind of had some words to say oh, as yeah. well, right? Yeah, yeah. It, um, it's up on our YouTube channel, but you want to kind of summarize what he said because we, we'll follow that up with um, some more people who we're going to have here on the line. Yeah, without giving too much of what Ryan said, because uh, we do want you guys to tune in and actually check out that episode, uh, that, that clip yourselves. But yeah, he yeah. 
he pretty much just echoed, uh, you know, again, that mama mentality, you know, and how uh, how that work ethic, you know, he wants to, you know, apply it in the, in the boxing game. Yeah. In a way, you know. And so, yeah, um, to me, that's one of – Kobe left so many messages, so many, you know, things that, that not just – NBA players, yeah. but like any any uh, anybody in uh yeah in life can. I'll take. cut you off yeah. real yeah. quickly, Chris, because we have uh, Mr. Arnold Barboza Jr. on the line here, hey. and we are live on air, my man. How you doing? I'm good, man. How about yourself? All good, all good, man. Join life. Um, yeah, we're kind of on the on the Kobe topic. Uh, not to just hit you with it real quick, but we're just on the topic and um. I know you're a big fan. I know when when you were here on the show, that was that was a sentiment, right? We had a whole twenty minutes talking about yeah. Kobe and Shaq and the Lakers, you know. So we know it affected a lot of people, and and we know you always rep LA to the fullest, and and we know that you were a, a big Kobe fan. So we just kind of wanted to get your your thoughts on um, everything that transpired with Kobe. Uh, you know, first off, man, I just want to give a shout out to the Lakers right now. We're playing against the Nuggets, man. It's a really good game. They're okay. Hey. 751. Okay. But, I'll keep us updated. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, dude, uh, you know, um, it just, you know, it just prayers to the families, man. And, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's very sad, bro. You know, not only because it's Kobe, but, you know, just, just, you know, just the families, bro, that everyone that was involved, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, man. I mean, I just had a, a uh, baby girl that was born yesterday at Dang. 10 o'clock at night. Oh, 10 man. Congrats, man. Congratulations. Dang, yeah, no, thanks, man. That's I appreciate cool. it. So, you know, like, it's it's crazy, man. Like, just thinking about it, you know, it just it gives me chills every single time, man. And, and I remember growing up, bro, he was, you know, everyone looked up to him, you know, especially where we're from. And, yeah. um, <clears throat> and I mean, man, he was just, you know, he, he was a, a, a just his, his mentality, man, his worth ethic, man, is just contagious, you know, and, uh, and uh, man, I just uh, not too many words to say, man, about the topic because you know he was a big influence to me and everyone. Bro, my pops. I mean, we. I, I remember going to to, to El Monte, bro, eating a post pizza, watching the Lakers games and playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, it was, it's really cool, man. I just want to you know thank him for all the memories, man. You know, it was it was amazing. Without a doubt, and you know we were lucky too because we were able to grow up in that era, right? Yeah. Since we were kids, we we saw Kobe come into the league and. Mm-hmm and struggle at the beginning and then started winning championships then a little bit of more struggle when Shaq left and then got some more rings and uh, I think we were just fortunate to to be able to live um in this era you know we got to witness Kobe but um I'm gonna pass the phone to my man Chris here real quick um got some words for Arnold uh, Chris what's up Arnold Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, doing good, man. First of all, I want to thank you for for joining us. I know this is uh, not the happiest of topics to cover. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we like Geo's echoed. I mean, you you showed us not just when you were here, but like at your fights, sporting the colors and, and no bigger Laker than than Kobe. You know, the greatest Laker uh, ever. And so, um, I guess I want to I want to ask like where where were you when you found out about the news, and if you can just tell us a little bit about that. Um, you know, I was actually, I was actually with my girlfriend, and we were, uh, my girlfriend and my swagger, we were, uh, we're getting some, uh, some menudo, and, um, at a restaurant, and, and then they just popped up on the alert, and everyone started talking about it, you know, um, my, my girlfriend's a big Lakers fan, so she started crying, and, mm. and I was tripping out, man, and I seen the TV, and it was real, you know what I mean, because sometimes there's a lot of fake news, but, yeah, it was real, man, and, and it's just, you know, it's crazy, man, because then I started, and it was crazy, because that morning, um, it's crazy because that morning before we left to get Menudo, I was I was watching highlights of, of uh, Kobe because LeBron mm. had just passed him up. Yeah. On the on the all time scoring list, so I was like, I told I told my grandma, man, I miss Kobe playing, like, man, I miss this dude playing. And it's crazy. And then like a few, you know, like an hour later, we get that that news, you know. And I was like, what the? I was like, damn, look, that's that's crazy, man, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's just it, it's 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 a crazy thing, man, that happened. And and I, I mean, I'm just honored, man, that. That, you know, that I fought, you know, I had my biggest fight, you know, my hmm. biggest fight in my career yeah. at the Staples Center, you know, and, and that was kind of like my coming out party, you know, and yeah. I know the, the Staples Center posted it on Instagram, so I mean, who knows what if wow. did see it, you know what I mean? So, like, I mean, you never know, bro. So, like, it's just, I don't know, it's an honor, man. It's just, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. I'm sure his, 
you know, his work ethic, you know, has you can take like it's part of, of of your your work work ethic as well. It's part of like I we mentioned before. It's not just basketball. It's it goes through all sports, not just sports, but life as well. Um, when your kids get a bit get a little bit older and you tell them about Kobe, what are you gonna tell them? Ah, uh, bro. I'm a, I mean, where do I start? I mean, it just first off, first, he, you know, he, he was a great father, great person, you know, and then he was a great basketball player, you know. And um, I remember my my all time memory bro, of him is, is you know, I mean, all, of course, all the championships, all the playoff wins, all those buzzer beaters he had, mm-hmm. and all that. But there was this one time I think he was playing the Warriors, and he um he tore his Achilles. Mm-hmm. And um, and he just he, he went back out there. He yeah. shot the free throw, made it, came off, walked off on his own, and it just shows you, bro, his his will, bro, his his you know his desire and, and his strength, bro. He's just the ultimate competitor. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, it's a, some it's someone to look up to, bro. I mean, you know, and and, and it sucks that you know, like my kids grow up, they don't really know who he is. So we got this kind of like a little yeah. history lesson we have to give them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I tell Gio is like. Yeah, we heard about uh, Michael, you know, when, you know, coming up, but we didn't really, you know, grow with Michael. We just knew that he was this, the best player ever. And, when it, and it, again, to echo Gio's sentiments, like it was an honor growing up with Kobe, seeing him go from that eight, number eight to that 24. And, uh, yeah, he was a little cocky at, at first, but, I mean, it kind of gravitated to us, you know, rebellious kids from the 90s and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. does, does do you connect a little bit with that? Uh, yeah, bro, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, to me, he wasn't really too like too too cocky. I mean, I know his his uh, his, his first season mm-hmm. in the NBA wasn't as good. <laughs> you know, I remember just the air ball sometimes. You know, <laughs> but but um, but man, it just it just shows you know like the maturity. Like yeah. we've really seen him grow, bro. Like I mean, we're as we're growing, you know, you, like you look now and you're like, damn, he was like a young, like you said, like you know, young prospect flying all over the floor. And then as he got older, he changed his whole game up. You know, and he was more mm-hmm. finesse player. Um, so I mean it's crazy and then you see him as a father bro and, he, and, and you see her today he was doing after basketball with his daughter his daughter was a beast bro and so yeah. I mean it, it's crazy bro you know it's, it's real crazy yeah. alright I'm gonna pass over the phone over yeah. to, to Gio but thank you for sharing um, those sentiments uh, Arnold we really, really appreciate it man nah, no problem man anytime alright alright so just to move on from that uh, you know topic that we don't necessarily like to talk about you know unfortunate stuff but um some more happier stuff um you did have a very very 2019 right i actually gave you the knockout of the year in your last fight i'm a big big fan of body punches and you snatched that body um so just describe to us uh how you think your year went in uh 2019 um you know first off man thanks i, I seen that you know and, uh, <laughs> Giving me the knockout here. That was dope, man. I appreciate that. For um, sure. But, um, but, man, it all started, uh, you know, in 2019. It, 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 you know, I, I felt like that was going to be my year to get a title shot. Um, we made a big statement, man. You know, mm-hmm. it started at the Staples Center in Mike Alvarado. And it continued, you know, and um, it, it, it kind of sounded like a, my groove, you know what I mean? And, my, and uh, just everything's changed, you know. But, um, man, 2019 was great for me. I'm just looking for a better 2020. You know, I, mean, I know probably... A title shot is not going to come soon, you know. I understand um, Josh Taylor and, and you know, Jose, Jose Ramirez have their, their mandatories and they probably want to fight each other and unify. I mean, I don't know. But the thing is, man, we just got to keep keep fighting, keep looking impressive, you know, and keep winning, you know, so that's the ultimate, the ultimate goal. For sure, man. Yeah, like I said, uh, to me it was a very, very good year. And um, first of all, I just want to thank you for taking this call. I know it's a difficult topic, you know, the Kobe thing to talk about, but thank you for taking this call from my part. And, um, yeah, I just want to thank you, man. Hey, man, appreciate it, man. Anytime, man. You guys, you know, uh, you guys are, are, are cool with me, man. You guys are, are good friends, bro. So anytime, man, anytime you get me some. All right. Any last messages, any plugs you want to you wanna put in this uh, podcast real quick for all the listeners? Uh, you know, man, I, I, honestly, I just want to tell everybody that, that listens to the podcast, man, check me out on my Instagram at Arnold underscore Barboza underscore Junior. You know, uh, my Twitter is Junior Barboza Arnold. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to, to, to everybody, man, that's going to follow me and just keep supporting me. And I uh, appreciate it, man. It's, it's big things coming to 2020. Hey. Yeah, man, I just, uh, just want to say that, dude, uh, 
be patient. I know big things are coming for you. Um, sometimes we say that people don't see uh, all the hard work that, that you guys do, but uh, you guys are just one opportunity away. And when it comes, I know you're going to take advantage of that, man, for sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that a lot. All right, man. That was Arnold Barboza, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Arnold. Peace out, my man. I appreciate All it. All right. Arnold Barboza, man, good friend of the show. Yeah. Let me hit him with a quick round of applause, man. I haven't hit this this, this clap button real quick. <laughs> Arnold Barboza, big Kobe fan, big Laker fan, and he's making a lot of noise, man. Yeah. If you're from the L.A. area, you probably probably heard his name. Um, and we were there right at the Michael Rado fight yeah. at Staples, and mm-hmm. it was impressive. We had all all our buddies there, and they're just like, "Damn, who's that guy with the Kobe right? li- with the with the with the Lakers colors?" <laughs> and we talked about how how to pull in the crowd, right? Like, you yeah. got to be entertaining, not just inside the ring, but outside the ring. The colors, you know, that show that show was just nice. And uh, that knockout, we did, nobody has beaten Mike, yeah, so decisively so early the way. Uh, yeah, Barbosa has, and we remember like a lot of people gave Barbosa a flag for not having that many knockouts, right? And <laughs> Myself I think, included. Exactly. You're. Well, like, I remember talking on this podcast yeah. saying I don't think he's gonna knock Mike Alvarado uh-huh. out because at the time he only had like eight knockouts. Yeah. He had about twenty wins and eight knockouts, and he has three in a row now, mm-hmm. three knockouts in a row. So he's getting him up there. And when them. he was in the podcast, he told us he had a hand injury, uh-huh. right? They all say that, yeah. right? But in this case, I'm starting to believe it. I know it's, it's because three in a row and and he's not just beating just you know yeah. just anybody you know yeah. experienced guy mike you know and and two other good opponents so man yeah. it's looking good for arnold it's looking good and it's you know what you want the knockouts to, you you want them to come out there at the end of you know as you're getting those those near those title shots yeah it's a good thing he's getting them now because some fighters get those knockouts early right yeah, and then they start losing it at towards the end when they get yep. go go up That's against the competition. But you know yeah. what? We welcome those knockouts, and so I know Barbosa is working hard. We we follow him on Instagram. We see him day in and day out uh, grinding, and so uh, I'm sure that mama mentality uh, is there with him. And so uh, just like just like Andy the Destroyer, he was guys? one opportunity away from that from that fight. Yeah, so we have another. Good friend of the show, Mr. Hey. Alfredo Escarcega Jr. How's it going, Alfredo? How hey. you guys doing, man? All good, all good, man. Doing good, man. You're live on air, by the way. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, you're on air, man. Um, yeah, man. Alfredo was on our show a while ago, right? Yeah. Couple, couple, couple months. When was that? Months ago. Yeah. Uh, I say like. October. August, September of last month, or last year. Of last year, yeah. yeah. something like that, man. It was a very good show. You guys can check it out. It's still up there on YouTube. Check it out. Our good friend Alfredo Escarcega. But that's uh real quickly. Let's update the people. What you been up to? Well, man, I'm just I'm getting ready. I'm training out here in Phoenix. I'm fighting actually next Saturday. Hey, hey, yeah, that's I'll what's back. up. I'll be back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight in uh. I believe in San Luis, Colorado, and Mexico, and then I'm gonna fight oh, nice. in April. April out here in Phoenix, most likely. So I'm just getting ready, staying busy. Yes. You know, just gotta get back into the mix. Staying busy, man. And your your last fight, if I'm not mistaken, was canceled, right? You're about yes, to fight in, in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to fight out here, um, January 18th, I believe, and the fight actually fell through. You know, I was staying ready. You know, training. I've been I've been busy this whole time, man. Even since the months uh, um, since my last fight when I was on you guys' show so I've just yeah. been getting ready you know just looking for dates and you know staying in the gym that's what's up man I'm gonna pass the phone over to Chris here he's gonna say what's up hey what's up buddy what's up man how you doing doing good bro man we miss you here in the studio man we gotta for get real. you back I know man I gotta hey. get out there again yeah hey uh, we have a contract with you you got to show up at least three times a year man <laughs> <laughs> He's still young. He could do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no man. We just want to thank you for taking this call. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we wanted to call you uh, uh, two weeks ago when we filmed this uh, the the Kobe special, but we got very caught on in the in the moment. And so yeah, um, got emotional. We got emotional, man. man. Like uh, it was got tough. carried away. Yeah, but we we promised that we were gonna have you on and uh, and to give us your thoughts because we know you're a big Lakers fan, yeah. a big Kobe fan. You're still very young, so, uh, you know, some of us a little bit older grew up with Kobe, but as you can see, he affects people from all ages, including yourself. So I'm going to ask you, um, uh, 
give give me your thoughts on what he meant to you uh, personally. Um, well, personally, man, I've been a Kobe Bryant fan since I was a baby. Mm. Uh, my dad grew up a Lakers fan. We're from a small town in El Paso, Texas called Babins, but my dad said when he was a kid, he only grew up watching Western channels, so his, his three teams were the Dodgers, the Lakers, and the Cowboys. I, I, I have two of those teams, the Dodgers and the Lakers, and obviously I'm a Cardinals fan. I grew up mm. in here in Phoenix. But, uh, man, like I said, uh, growing up, I was always a big-time Kobe fan. You know, watching him since I was a kid. I, matter of fact, I have pictures. I'm gonna have to find them and send them to you guys. When I was when I was a baby, hey. living in Texas, uh, oh. I used to be a really big basketball fan. You know, I used to have a court, a little 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 uh, one of those. What do they call like um, like little play school courts? I used okay. to have one. <laughs> little plastic yeah, ones. Yeah. 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 You know, I used to have one of those. And have my little, you know, my little number eight jersey. My favorite number is actually number eight, and it's always been number hey. eight since. You know, that's one of. Obviously, I've been a 24 Kobe fan too, but. Me, since I was watching this since I was a kid growing up, okay. you know, watching all of the games, you know, the, the early 2000 finals, the three-peats, I don't really remember those that much, but mm-hmm. when I was in, like, about sixth grade, you know, the back-to-back finals, I remember watching all those, even the loss to the Celtics, man, I, I remember mm-hmm. all those games. And being from Phoenix, obviously, a lot of people are Phoenix Suns fans, and at the time when yeah. I was growing up, hmm. everybody always hated Kobe Bryant and the Lakers, uh, here, yeah. so I've always, I've always yeah. heard it, man, even from my own cousins and family <laughs> yeah. members. But we're big time Laker fans, and we've always been, and continue to, you know, live on with the legacy of Kobe Bryant, no matter what. You know, obviously, what happened a few weeks ago, man, was really, really tragic, and it honestly, it really, really brought my um, attention to how how short life really is, and how um, you know, life's never guaranteed, man. Even somebody who I looked up as like a, you know, like uh, almost larger than life person, you know, Kobe Bryant. Think, man something like that could happen to him man it's you know you just got to live your life happy have your family members you know live every day you know like it's your last and just enjoy life yeah yeah when we heard the news like our friend broke the news on, on the way back from from vegas and we were in a very happy mood up until then um one of our friends he's a, he's a jokester so at first like we didn't believe him we were just like we we're like no man like that's that's fake news and yeah. shit so uh like we didn't believe it so yeah, it hit us pretty pretty hard. So um, I'll ask you the uh, same thing I asked uh, Arnold. Uh, like, what was your thought process when when the news broke? Dude, I didn't even believe it. Okay, so kind of like you guys were. Uh, I had gotten a haircut. That was on the Sunday, so I got a haircut that morning. And we were at the barbershop, everything talking. You know, actually, I was talking about Kobe Bryant too. And we were oh just man, finishing, finishing up and everything, man. Like saying that I've always been a big Laker fan, and I was kind of I was comparing about. Um, me being a Kobe fan as versus being a LeBron fan. Like over the years, I never really been a LeBron fan up until I became a Laker. Mm-hmm. So we were we were debating that. You know, I was, I've always been a Kobe fan. So we were saying that, and I, I had left, and I met up with my cousin to go eat at uh, Ona Hawaiian Barbecue. So I went to go eat with him, mm-hmm. and uh, we were eating, man. And all of a sudden, I got a text message from my friend too. He broke me the story. He's like, man. He's like, Kobe died. And I look at my phone. I'm like, no way. And I go on, I Google it right away, because, you know, yeah, you can look at, he's like, look at Twitter, he's all, all, so I go and Google it, and I'm like, oh, shoot, and it wasn't even on, ESPN hadn't even broke it yet. Yeah. It was, it was, like, all over the, the internet, but it wasn't, uh, like, even ESPN hadn't said anything, so I was like, holy crap, that is crazy, so it took me, like, a good, I'll say, like, to really let it kick into me, where I was like, holy crap, that's crazy, and then, then I found out about the daughter and everybody else throughout the couple. Yeah, no, nah, that was just. And it, like, hit me, like, oh, nah, so. It took me a few hours to really like process that, and then honestly, it even took me like to really think like, man, that's real. Like a couple of days. Oh yeah. Now, uh, like for us, um, it was a four-hour drive, so we heard it maybe like twenty minutes into the drive, right, Gio? Yeah. So like everything that we heard, like I know Gio didn't want to be on his phone. Like he's like he didn't want to be. Uh-uh. To me, I was like I need to know, and maybe I like I messed myself up more for just like being on the phone, like updating, updating Twitter, updating everything, because I was just like getting a. Uh, both factual and non-factual news so i'm just yeah. like what like there were just a bunch of emotions going through and like we were just all very quiet in the car like so yeah to me like it was so surreal like even late days later when you're looking at the news you're like oh, this is a bad dream like this is just yeah. like but um when we were coming back on the 110 and we saw like the sign by I was staples like, yeah. and staples i was like fuck because oh, it didn't know because you guys got to see it yeah, like, we got to see, like, everything else had been, like, on our phone, and, like, I was just, like, man, this is just so much nonsense, like, but once, once you see it out there, like, when we saw the, the rest in peace Kobe on that, on um, that Staples Center sign, I was like, fuck, yeah. Dude, I was telling you the same thing, like, 
Well, so I'm not even in California, but I've been seeing, I have friends over there, obviously, you, like, you guys and stuff that live in L.A., so they, they've been sending me, like, the pictures and stuff, like, all over, mm-hmm. you know, like, even, even like, uh, at the Staples Center, where, you know, you guys all went to the, like, where they had the big memorial, that's yeah. crazy, it, it's amazing to see, like, just how big of, even, oh, as a matter of fact, I work for a company now, well, they sponsor me, mm-hmm. they're called 8-Man Strong, you guys see me wearing their shirts a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a really, really big, uh, company they're trying to get into boxing as well but they're really big in the mma world and powerlifting but they made a, a limited edition shirt for kobe's foundation as well mm-hmm. man that thing has been selling out like over and they've had to restock it like i promise you yeah three four times man because it just keeps getting ordered and ordered and ordered yeah. it's like man it truly shows you how big of an impact that guy really was for people not just in sports you know but just in general and all over the world yeah so even like I said, you know, like growing up to that, it's it's it was crazy. I got people calling me like if like if I do Kobe. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. calling me like I'm sorry, I don't want you when that happened. I was like, man, like I don't really know Kobe like that, but obviously I'm a huge fan. But people yeah. were calling me like I knew him. Yeah. All right, Alfredo, I'm going to thank you for taking this call. I'm going to uh, send it over to Gio. He's got a few things to ask you. Yes. Himself. Hey. Yeah, just to add on to that, dude, like I went to the Staples Center to the to the uh, little memorial yeah. stuff that they had outside and i never seen anything like that there was literally a couple thousand people but it was just quiet ah, shit. it was quiet like I didn't want to go to that. it was crazy dude i can't even imagine how that felt like to be in the species being there like you guys get to really see you know like that impact if i felt it over here in arizona i can imagine over there in, in l.a Oh, yeah. yeah, and like I was just walking down the the aisles that they set up. They had walls where people write messages and stuff. They had just balloons, candles everywhere, and it just didn't even feel real. Like I was just walking, and I felt like I wasn't even there. Like it was just crazy. It was quiet, and all you saw was Kobe jerseys. Oh man, it was crazy. It was crazy, man. But um, yeah, just like uh, Chris said, I want to thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts. We know you're a big Kobe fan, big Laker fan. Um, so thank you for taking this call, my man. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you guys for always keeping up with me and, you know, supporting me. Because I'm working hard and I'm looking to have a big year this year. Um, you know, little by little, you know, one fight at a time is what it's going to take. And uh, we're, we're training hard. We're getting ready. And like I said, you know, like, I live with the mama mentality. I know you guys do too. Hey, so that's big Kobe up. fan. Oh, big yeah. Kobe fan. Like I said, he's always going to live on with us. 24-8. 24-8, yep. <laughs> it's people, 24 and 8, yeah. yeah so man. We're always going to live that. You know, we're never going to forget that. And, and obviously, uh, the inspiration that he left and the work ethic that he left as a person, you know, we all got to, you know, live up to that and, you know, try to push ourselves every day. So that's what I'm trying to do, man. As an athlete and as a person, you know, I got to live up to that. Yeah. Like I said, I appreciate you guys, and I say thank you guys uh, for having me on the show. Uh, I can't wait to be there live again. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that could be soon. Gotta give the people what they want. Hey, we got the body. We got the ATR challenge coming up. Out. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but you know, hey, say what's up to B, B flat for us, man. Yeah. Yeah, I will. He was running right now. Not I would have had him on here with us, but <laughs> he's fighting the week after me, uh, okay. the twenty eighth out there in Dallas. No, for okay. sure, for sure. That's what's up. Mikey's fight, so. That's what's up. So we're busy, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Man, that's cool, dude. Yeah, for sure. Um. Just one last thing. Uh, where can we follow you? And then last message to the people listening. Uh, you guys can follow me at uh, on Instagram at ae.jr and uh, on Facebook Alfredo Scarcega Jr. On Twitter Jr. underscore Scarcega. Um, and one last thing, man, is you know if you guys haven't uh, heard of me, you guys should look me up. And like I said, you know this is uh, 2020 should be a big year for me. You know we're gonna come up one fight at a time. And said so appreciate you guys, all the boxing fans and. Everybody that supports against the ropes support me too. Hey, hey, hey. that's what's up. Here you go. Here I you go, Chris. Okay, what's up? I just want to ask you, uh, bro, what was your favorite Kobe moment? Like a positive note, and and it's on a like positive that note. That iPod that I really, really know that I can say that I yeah. genuinely watched. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 2010 that we beat the Celtics. Yep. Mm-hmm. The, game the seven. Of Kobe Bryant standing up, dude. I remember that game because we were losing that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were down by like 20, and I remember because I lived in a in a, in a by the Cardinal Stadium at the time in an apartment, oh. and I was probably like sixth or seventh grade. We lived in a <laughs> in a condo, so I remember watching that game, dude, and I was mad, mad, because we were down by like <laughs> 20. And before you know it, dude, we just came back up, boom, 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 and that's when we, that was that was the game winning. I think it was like six, game six, I believe. Yeah, it closed yeah. out, but that was in home game seven. Game seven. Yeah. Like, you know why I remember? You know why I remember, Alfredo? Yeah. 
because that was my high school graduation. I didn't get to watch it. <laughs> Man, oh, really? he had to go walk. <laughs> or else I wouldn't. I remember get... that game. I cried, and then I got oh, excited. Man. And I cried. Like, yeah, I remember that game. Dude. That mm. game was amazing. That was, that's when we won the back to back. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. remember that because I wasn't a baby then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Gio can miss out. Also, they're gonna make him uh, pick up his diploma on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? Alfredo has eight wins right now. Oh, hey, eight professional yes, wins. Sir. Oh man, hey yes, man. Sir. Just uh, ahead, c- man. congrats on your on your career so far, and looking forward to more, man. For real. No, I appreciate you guys. Like I said, you know we're uh, we're working hard and we're being you know patient. Like I said, you know um, it's gonna fall along by itself as long as we work, put the work in, and you know continue to do what we do. That is what's up. Follow Alfredo Escarcega Jr. Follow him. He's at A, but we're going to be with him until he gets a 24 for show. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. And beyond, hopefully. And beyond mm. for sure, oh, man. yeah, man. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Alfredo. Este, I know it was a, this is a hard subject, but, but thank you for, uh, you know, bringing us a smile, man. You know, putting, uh, you know, Kobe, because uh, it's a celebration of life at the end. Uh, I, I know yeah. that that day's coming at 224, and uh at the end of the day, we just got to celebrate that we had somebody like that, you know, that could not just change the, the NBA game, but, like, life for so many people. You know, he yeah. he's affected so many people that, you know, because of him, because of all that work that he did in day in and day out, now people are going to be, you know, pursuing their dreams or passions and working hard for him. And you know that that mom mentality is going to get people closer to their dreams and make them just better parents, better uh, better people overall. And so, you know, we're just going to celebrate his life. You know, thank, thank, thank him for for all those years that he put in on on this earth, and he's definitely made this this world a better place. No, that's it for sure. I agree with you there. And um, honestly, man, just to add to that a little bit, you know, um, obviously, you know, all of us huge Kobe fans, but also, you know, uh, like to shout out to the other victim, you know, and to the rest in peace, and the, and to closer to their families as well, to other victims, his daughter, and obviously the other seven victims on the on the plane, but. Uh, like I said, um, excuse me, helicopter. But like I said, um, you know, um, we're all big Kobe fans. We're gonna live that no matter what. You know, obviously we get to live, in, we get to live that in the memories. And, you know, we we all have memories in our own that you know we can definitely say that we remember at one point we watched one of his games. You know, and we're gonna say, oh, you know, we thought about that. And obviously the way he, you know, his work ethic and just his overall, you know, train of thought. I always wanted to be the best. I think you should. Everybody should. Uh, you know, look to put that in their, you know, in their life, no matter what, you know, to try to work extra hard to be, you know, no matter what it is, whether I'm a boxer, you know, whether you guys are, you know, doing your podcasting, um, anything, you know, mm-hmm. anything you want to do in life, you just got to live that, doing a little bit more, you know, to be the best. And I think that's where Kobe Bryant installed that in all of us. Hey, exactly. Oh, yeah. Can I have said better, man? <laughs> all right. I'm going to give the phone over to Gio. Finish yeah. things off. Appreciate it. Yeah, now, once again, just want to thank you for taking this call, Fredo. Like Chris said, thanks for, you know, sharing your thoughts at the end of the day. You know, we, we try to take the positives out of the negatives. And, and you know, I just want to thank you for sharing this positive energy hey. with us and with all uh, the listeners. Uh, uh, thank you guys, man. Thank you guys for having me and thinking about me as well. Like I said, you know, um, obviously you guys know that I'm a genuine fan as well, just like you guys. But um, I appreciate it. And like I said, um, obviously it's tough times for us as yeah. Laker fans and as, you know, Kobe Bryant fans. But, you know, we all come together and we all consider, you know, uh, celebrate his life instead of, you know, you know, mourning it. Yeah. So I think we all can, you know, lift ourselves up and obviously learn from what he put on this earth for us, you know. Definitely. Yeah, we'll we'll keep in touch, Alfredo. Once again, thank you. And, uh, yeah, man, take care. We'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. Appreciate it, man. You guys have a good night. All right. Hey. You too, Alfredo. Peace. All right. That was All Alfredo right. Escarcega Jr. Jr. Yeah, man. Uh, always nice talking to him, man. Yeah, always cool, nice, man. man. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just good to see um, all the positive stuff that Kobe left on this earth, man. Like you yeah. said, uh, we're fortunate to, to be able to witness that. And, and uh, I feel like he made a, the world a better place. He, it's The world is a better place uh, than when he came into the world, man. How he left it, it's a little better. So, mm. yeah. Kobe forever. Hey, there you go, man. Yeah. Whew. All right, switching gears, man. Switching gears. Yeah, what's up? What we got? Let's talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about some of the previous fights uh, that happened in Miami. Mm. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about not all of them. Let's talk about a few. No. A few that are. Some will put people to sleep. Even <laughs> us talking about it. 
<laughs> exactly. But yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's talk about some of the other ones um, that maybe didn't go the way people thought, right? Yeah. Like which one? Oh, well, let's start with our boy. You know? Oh, okay. You want to start with that? Okay. Because okay, I was going to say, I was rooting actually for Jojo Diaz. Yeah. No, I yeah. thought he was going to win. Before? Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't know. My, my brother was watching. I think I had gone home from work and my brother was watching it. First thing I said, I was like, Jojo's going to fuck him up. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to mess him up like that, like that. But uh -huh. I thought he was going to win. And I think that was a bit surprising. But you want to start with, with uh, Anthony? No, let's let's save Anthony for, for last. All right. Let's Ooh, save Anthony man. for last. But uh, yeah, to, right. to, to go back to Tevin Farmer, Joseph Diaz, I don't think a lot of people give Jojo yeah. too much of a, a shot. They knew it was going to be you know, competitive. Yeah. Maybe a year ago, I would have gone with Tevin Farmer. Yeah, but yeah. for some reason, I don't know, there's the... And he came out with a Kobe shirt. Hey, dude. It's yeah. like that was like, come on, like, like you know when 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 boxers when Nipsey died, yeah, everybody was coming out to his music ring entrance. Uh, -huh. uh Andy Reid Jr. came out to Nipsey Hustle yeah. in his first fight against Joshua. Joshua. It just gave him superpowers, though. Something, man. You something know. So happened. when I saw that Kobe shirt number eight, I was like. Oh, he's 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 gonna win, man. He's gonna win. <laughs> Today's his night. Yeah. No, yeah. When I saw that jersey, I slapped my finger. I was like, "Yes, come on, yeah. And I have changed my hat. Hey. You guys <laughs> know it. Somewhere in the Lakers hat now. You know, yeah. just bringing out the old um, Lakers gear and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Kobe made it a little cooler, dude, to just be a Lakers fan yeah. and just commemorate his life, man. So yeah. I'm bringing out all my my Lakers gear and sporting it. Yeah, proudly. I know you made an ATR purple and yellow, right? Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna want one, bro. Oh, I you got a request. <laughs> Put in your order. Because once people see me rocking, it, they're gonna be like, "Hey, Ooh. I want that one too, man." Yeah, I was gonna rock it today, but I'm gonna save it for next week. Next week there should be go. pretty cool. So this one, we're just gonna wrap it up. We're gonna do a quick show, right? We That's were always supposed the plan. to do a quick show, man. We're gonna That's be in plan. and out. You're over here in your <laughs> suit and tie over here, so yeah. we're gonna be in here for a little bit and then bounce, but convo got good yeah and you know it always happens yeah that happens <laughs> so yeah that Tevin I, I, that Tevin fight I thought even though I saw Jojo with the Kubi I was like something might happen but I was like I don't know man like this I don't I, but once he started seeing those punches go in the first second round I was like oh this is night tonight and it looked like early on it wasn't going to be JoJo's night because mm -hmm. of that cut yeah it yes, was yes, nasty yes. I didn't think they were yeah. going to go beyond the fourth I thought they were just gonna be like you know what it looks bad call it a day we get a whatever no contest, act like the yeah. fight never happened, and then we run it back later on exactly. because it was ter it was bad cut. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah, I can't look at that picture. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I think he said something at the end of the interview. We looked at it, so he's like, "Oh, that shit's ugly." But yeah, something we when you see that cut, I know, I know the the cut man. The corner's gonna go work on it, but you always think like. There's no way that thing's gonna close. Like you, you, you feel like this is box. He's, like he's gonna keep targeting that eye and it's gonna open yeah, up again. Yeah, that's and what we thought. They, right? And they won't be able to save it. Like you just, but you know they went back to it. They worked for you know a couple of rounds, but again it opened up and it looked huge. And I was like, ah, Jojo, you were so close. You know, it wasn't for that cut, but yeah, you know, he saw that fight out. I, I think I'm not sure if if, if Ted really had an injury. I'm, I'm sure maybe he did, but. That that night, you just knew JoJo wasn't gonna be denied. Yeah, he was just um yeah. And I'm always happy to see the reaction after the fight, right? When they say, yeah. "And the new," Ooh. right? And you see that reaction, and you see the yeah. the excitement, the joy, the tears, blood, sweat, and tears, literally yep, Riddler, in this yeah. fight. And uh, yeah, congrats to JoJo. I believed in him. I know a lot of people aren't too big on him, but for some reason in this fight, I was just rooting for him. Yeah. I don't know for for a while people had like had this notion of JoJo that he was gonna be like that young prospect that Pete had Ortiz. yeah that had <laughs> potential but yeah. it was just gonna come up short of that title and it seemed that way if, like the last couple of years of his yeah. career um, and uh, but no again you're just one fight away one opportunity away yeah. from lifting that title and it seemed like he just wanted this he just more. wanted it more he yeah. wanted it more man Tevin was Mamba just mentality hey there you go man. He unlocked it, man, and <laughs> now he's a title holder. He's a champion uh -huh. now, and so congratulations to JoJo. Can't yeah. wait to to see him What's continue next? to bring yeah. that. Yeah, it should be good fights going yeah. up next, man. Definitely good. They say that the hardest thing is not winning it, but keeping, keeping it. Keeping so it. We'll see what JoJo brings. Yeah. You know, another fight that uh, that we'll talk about is Daniel Roman. Oh, Daniel Roman, man, against and I have trouble saying this. It's a little tough. Akmadaliev. And so that like, was pretty good. Yeah, we I don't, we we saw the the commentary. They were giving uh, Daniel Roman 
you know, yeah. some slack for taking this high risk, low reward type fight and taking on a very talented young yeah. fighter. Do you think that's warranted that that type of um, criticism in this case by the commentators? Uh, warranted? I, I think, I mean, everybody's allowed to say whatever they, they want. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, no, you want the best to fight the best. Yeah. I know it's yeah. a business, but like when you say when you say comments like those, you kind of like you 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 put the business before the the the, the sweet science, I yeah. guess you can say. So that, that's, that's that's why it rubbed me the wrong yeah. way. And that's a problem I have because when the fights that are quote unquote supposed to be made yeah. and don't get made because of business, yeah. you know they're criticizing that right. Fight yeah. this guy, fight that guy. Yes. But when someone wants to challenge themselves, yeah. take on that challenge, even if they're not getting necessarily rewarded yeah you know monetarily like they should you know you go out there and criticize them once again yeah so, they can't win yeah because i i think daniel roman went on record they asked him like why did you take this fight he's like well he was a mandatory yeah i'm gonna take him if, I'm, I'm sure i guarantee you if he would have ducked that fight if he would have said no people would have been like oh why well, aren't like, you fighting your mandatory yeah, huh? why are you ducking, ducking him yeah. huh and Business wise, he could have. I'm sure there's the politics could have gone in his favor and he would have been able to bypass that and fight somebody else. And that yeah. probably would have been smart for business. But then Daniel Roman's the one that has to live with that. Yeah. Right. It's his choice. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like um, we heard we hear that he doesn't he doesn't like to watch boxing. Yeah. He, yeah. he just goes in there. He's about his business, goes in there, fights, mm -hmm. gets his paycheck, gets his belt. Right. Except yeah. for this time. Mm -hmm. And bounces right that's yeah. what he does he fights he's a fighter yeah. right so i don't i don't blame him for for trying to take another easier route perhaps mm -hmm. or trying to get more money like hey it's his choice his career and it was it was a good fight at it the was end good of the day it was competitive. so it was very close yeah um i don't i didn't get to watch the whole thing but i think i caught the second half and I, it was close and it could have gone either way from what i hear yeah it was pretty close uh in my opinion i think uh, uh his opponent uh Agmedalia edged it just slightly, so? slightly. I mean, very it's still still close. It just uh, it was in there with a very, very very good fighter, cha a champion now, title holder now. Yeah. But you know, I'm sure this kid, I think his seventh eighth fight, uh, getting this title, you know, that's that's nothing that, that Dan Roman, you know, should be upset about. This is gonna mm. be one kid to watch for sure yeah. in the next coming years. Still very yeah. young, so yeah. Man, you kind of hope that he does become big time, right? Yeah. Just so Danny Roman could say, see, guys, be quiet. This guy's the real deal. Uh -huh. You know, don't criticize my decisions. Yep. Give him a chance, and he made the, the most out of it, man. But, right. yeah, Danny Roman. Um, what else we we had on that card? Who else we have? Anthony Sims Jr. Well, let's let's talk. What we, we have Boo Boo Andrade versus Luke Keller, but we're not going to talk <laughs> about that, man. Until he fights <sighs> somebody oh, with the name, somebody worth talking about. So yeah. We're going to bypass that. We're going to go like, see <laughs> boxing fans. That's how you boycott. If you want to get <laughs> the fights you want to get, ignore these fights. All right. Mm -hmm. Act like they never happened. Don't give it publicity. Don't write about it. Don't post pictures. Don't post videos. And maybe we'll maybe. get what we want. Hey. <laughs> maybe. We're going to talk about another fight. Another fighter. One, one guest that we've had on this podcast. One of our very close friends yeah one of the to me i can call him a friend yeah right? he's always showed his love we showed him love and he's like we talked about opening up right at the yeah. beginning of the podcast he's one of those who came in here um opened up yeah. told us a lot of a lot of um personal stories um he even mentioned uh the the story that he told to us about his father yeah he was supposed to save that for the next day that yeah. he had an interview and he just went ahead and told us you know and Ever since then, you know, it's been it's been nothing but love. Yeah, we're talking about none other than the magician Anthony Sims Anthony Jr. Sims Jr. Who's fighting for a title, he right? He's fighting for the Latino WBO <clears throat> Super Middleweight yeah. Belt. See, before we get started with that, I know a lot of people criticize all these belts, the mm -hmm. Latin American belts, the interim belts. Yeah. But if you've ever played competitive sports, you know that it's very difficult to win a championship yeah. i don't care what sport <laughs> it is it's yeah. very difficult like i can't remember the last time i won a championship playing soccer damn it's been a minute bro it's been a minute i remember losing <laughs> finals those are the ones you remember huh yeah for some reason the last two finals i played i lost My indoor end. yeah okay for futsal league 
and my team was up both times. Uh, and at the end, they caught up. And one of them were big time the underdogs, and we had it, let okay. it slip. Second one were big time favorites, had it, we're up like by three goals with like two minutes left, caught up. Okay. And we lost. Yeah. So okay. I'm saying that to say it's very difficult to win a championship at anything. I don't care if you're playing checkers. Mm-hmm. I don't. Pl- I don't care if you're playing tether ball. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're playing <laughs> kickball. Like it's, it's tough. very. It's tough because you're you're at the end of the day you have someone in front of you who wants it as bad a, or even more than you. So yeah, and he was fighting for a title, like right Latin yeah. American mm-hmm. title. What's yeah. the s- specific name on that? Does so that's say? the World Boxing Organization Latino Super Middle Title. All right, so he I'm I suppose he's eligible to fight for that because he has Cuban, Cuban descent, background, yeah. mm-hmm. right? I think through his mother's yeah. side. So yeah. he was fighting for that title. Um, Everybody was excited, right? He's repping Compton, mm-hmm. um, but he is from the Midwest, and everybody was excited. He was getting a lot of good, positive messages, man, but it just didn't happen. Yeah, he was fighting no easy opponent, and uh, and Romero Alexis Angulo, who previously uh, only had one defeat to El Surdo Gilberto Ramirez. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is a guy that we we looked at that record, and we we're like, oh, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a test for sure. It's not gonna be no walk in yeah. the park. And you know what? I feel like at that level is even dip more difficult than like the the quote-unquote real championship fights yeah. in boxing because you know like most champions they're they're probably favored like 70 30 to win mm-hmm. in most of their fights right yeah. but in these type of fights both guys like have similar records similar paths 50 mm-hmm. 50 fights yeah, yeah, yeah and i guess in those other ones like the politics are a little bit more in yeah, favor of the, of the the, of the known you, fighter you know so you yeah, know yeah. exactly what i'm saying the champion is always going to be yeah. even if it's a close fight they're they're going to get the decision yeah. and the, stuff like that exactly this one you're still like 50-50 yeah yeah it's a 50-50 you still haven't won the politics side of, of boxing yeah. you still have to go over that hurdle and this one was a tough one to 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 swallow uh i think anthony sins was anthony our boy was fighting pretty well boxing very well in the beginning but you just see that pressure bouncing from 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 Angulo, and in my opinion, I thought Anthony was still up, but I was like, mm. it's, it's it's judges yeah. can see something different, especially if you're ringside, especially if you see uh, that that pressure fighter coming, coming, coming. Yeah, he might be landing some good shots here and there, but it's like that, that what we see on the TV might be different from what they see ringside. They of might course. be seeing like the the bully bullying the the the, the boxer, and that's exactly what 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 the judges saw. And I was a little surprised when uh, Anthony's uh, coach told him, you're, you're behind. Yeah. But I mean. You thought he was up? I thought he was you up. thought he was slightly, up. Slightly, slightly. I knew it was close, but I thought, I was like, no, don't tell him that that, that, that you need a knockout. I guess he told him you need a knockout. You know, but I was like, oh, I don't know if he needs a knockout. Like, maybe if he thinks he's going for that, he'll, he'll leave himself open and get hurt because Angulo did have some power. He had some punch. Yeah. And so, but no, uh, his trainer was right the end he, uh anthony was uh behind on the scorecards and he didn't it i don't think he needed a knockout but he needs some knockdowns or yeah. to put some some rounds in the bag so so tell me your thoughts geo shocked surprised <clears throat> um i can't say i'm shocked mm-hmm. it, it is kind of surprising but once it's you look at his opponent's record mm-hmm. and his his path and, and it's for a title you know it's all out man you yeah. know it's all out um i actually didn't even get to catch the fight yet Oh, I okay. didn't. Um, I know you were keeping us updated. Yeah. Um, and I heard it was a boring fight. It was. That's what I heard. You okay. know, I don't know how to take that because I know Anthony's a boxer, right? Mm-hmm. And most people say, like, even the fight at the forum when he fought Von Alexander, mm-hmm. people were saying that was boring. But us, like, we're his friends and we, we <laughs> love boxing. We're like, it was a. Good. good boxing performance right mm-hmm. yeah so if you don't like boxing if you don't like sticking that broom out and mm-hmm. moving you know you're probably gonna say he his fights are boring but you know us that we appreciate the art of the sweet science of course you're gonna appreciate that mm-hmm. but um yeah that that's what i was hearing i haven't gone back to it i will eventually but um pretty sure we'll probably get him up here soon and have his thoughts on it yeah, yeah. you know yeah, so this 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 fight uh, made him lose his his O. Yeah, and but we said that the that Mayweather O era should be gone. It's gone. Yeah. Let's not even think about that. Let's it's just not even a thing anymore. Yeah, let's just focus on how he bounces back from this. What he's learned from this. I'm sure he's learned a lot. Uh, I'm sure he's going back with his corner, with his coach, his team, and they're talking about what went wrong, 
what they can do better yeah what they're gonna go back uh, and work on for sure to to yeah for this not to happen again and uh yeah i think this is this you gotta see the silver lining and and definitely like yeah. we'll make him better and uh, yeah. i can't wait for him to bounce yeah. back from this one because i know he will bounce back he's still yeah. very young it's a kobe air ball <laughs> it's a kobe, right? it's a kobe yeah. air ball yeah. at the beginning of his career that's yeah. what it was so yeah i can't wait uh can't wait anthony i know you're gonna come back yeah. you're gonna have bigger and better things are coming this is just a minor setback and what will be they for all sure have them. A, a great career so still got the, you bro all the greats have had their setbacks you know just about how you get up at yeah. this point I, I don't think it should be difficult uh for him he's been through a lot in, you know in his life since a kid so mm -hmm. i'm sure this is there's nothing for him i hope yeah. he's good mentally mm -hmm. but i think he'll be all right yeah he's tough We've all had setbacks. We've all had episodes too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man. but that was Anthony Sims Jr. losing his O. Um, can't wait to see what's next for him, man. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Yeah. I uh, hope he gets um, three more fights this year, honestly, just to try just to, to bounce forget back, yeah. that that yeah. L and get back on it, man. Get back yeah. on track. Yeah, this fight came very early January, so he's got yep. – a lot uh a lot of time on this calendar year to 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 get that big on that w side so yeah yes sir still gonna see you man we're gonna follow that and that those next fights coming up yeah um <laughs> Let's talk fights. i don't know why dude <laughs> like the, the quote of uh kanye came to mind which one the what do you say fuck <laughs> anything is possible magic made it remember <laughs> that magic yeah. johnson came back from well, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Let's uh, move on. Yeah. This Friday. What do we got? What we got? What we got? This Friday, we're calling fights. You want to keep talking about that? Oh, know. shit. I got to cancel my date. <laughs> <laughs> Girlfriends are going to be coming? mad. She's not coming to the fight? <laughs> shit. Now I got to edit this, edit this out. out. Come on, man. Man. Dude, mine's, mine's going. I'm a busy man. <laughs> I'm a busy nah, man. No, I'm going to go straight after work, honestly. I'm going to try to leave a little early. I know yeah. there's going to be some traffic. Got to make it from the LBC all the way to Montebello. Got to hop on that 710. I'm sure yeah. there's going to be a lot of traffic on there, man. But I, I should be there. I should be there by 7. It says first bout is at 8. So try to get up there, set up, and talk to some of the fighters maybe after as well. And it should be good, man. It should be exciting. Can't wait. Yeah. I'll be watching the zone fights up until then. Shoot, man. But, uh, yeah, man, it's going to be a great, great Friday of boxing. Uh you know what? I it's, it's crazy because uh, Oscar De La Hoya interviewed him today. Uh, he did say that there that it was Ryan's idea to have. Oh really? You know this this fight on Friday uh, for Valentine's Day. So I, I posed him the question that we've talked about on the podcast. I was like, yeah. okay, Oscar, you you're having this on a on a on a on a holiday. I was like, have you thought about ha marketing and uh, holding events? You know, with American fighters on the Fourth of July weekend. And if you see the uh, the uh, the interview, you see how he lights up. He's like, yes. He's like, <laughs> hell. And he's like, I thought about that. He's like, I want that. I want, I want to have like American based fighters. I'm good you got that response because yeah. normally people shut it down. Like, I, no. Yeah. I've been we've been barbecue, shut down before. No. People don't want to do that. Yeah, people don't want. They want to chill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I found myself on Fourth of July and I'm like barbecuing. I'm like, I want to see something on TV. Yeah. And the, obviously, the first time we're gonna gravitate is boxing. Like, I want to see some fights, man. But there's no fights because yeah. everybody's at home. You know, kind of. I kind of think of the NBA Christmas, Christmas Day, right? Yeah. Somebody's gotta work. Yeah. Because everybody's at home with their families, so someone has to work. But uh, yeah, man, I would, I would, I think it's very smart. And uh, yes, I saw him light up. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, okay. we wanna have like <laughs> events on the zone because the zone has this great schedule that they can work with. He's like, I wanna have fights and events. On every major holiday, St. Patty's Day, Fourth of July, and, you know, I thought he's gonna say Halloween too, man, for a second there, but uh, yeah, he wants to target those dates, and he's like, not just Cinco de Mayo, not just like yeah Mexican holiday. He's like, I want every major holiday. You know, to have it's it. crazy. Uh, just thinking about it, wrestling used to do the, to do that. Right? They used yeah. to have like main the the pay per view events. Yeah. During like Halloween, St. Patrick's, and, yeah. Slam or something. Yeah, they used to have those stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, summer slam is around there. Summer slam, summer, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. Uh, psh. oh, you want to talk about a little bit about that? The the press conferences with Ryan. Oh yes. You know, Jorge Linares, uh, Cobbs. Yeah. So uh, again, big, big, uh, big February fourteenth uh, date 
headlined by Ryan Garcia and Francisco Fonseca. Uh, but not just Ryan, you have Blair Cobbs, you have Jorge Linares, you have uh, uh, The Solution. Uh, you have a lot of good names on that card. And so, yeah, I was able to attend a week. S it's still going, still going a week's long uh, of events. So uh, yesterday was the open workout. Yes. First time we get to see uh, Ryan uh, in person, got to see that speed. Got to see what you know what the whole yeah. hype was about, right? Because yeah. in boxing you got these these fighters that sometimes are hype, but you gotta see you gotta see with your own eyes and see like if if you know if this is all for real. So yeah, I got to see that young man's speed. Got to see uh him moving around the ring. Uh, and so man, I am impressed with his speed. Very impressed with this with uh, his speed. Uh, uh, I got to talk to Eddie Reynoso. Uh, he talked very highly about one 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 aspect of his game. Of Ryan's game that I wanted to ask, and that was his maturity. He is 21 years of age. You know, he is one of the biggest stars up in boxing without a title. You know, he has a huge following, almost 5 million followers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, he's going to have a lot of distractions. So I did ask him, I was like, how is he dealing with those distractions with uh, his maturity level? Where is he at? And so, um, you know, he did mention being around Canelo has, you know, and with the birth of his daughter, it has helped that maturity. Uh, you know, heightened, and so he sees, he likes what he sees in Ryan. He's learning uh, very fast, very quickly, uh, and it's being just around that environment of a Canelo environment where, you know, like if you're gonna be around Canelo, you better be like working hard. Yeah. You know, you better bring it, and so, you know, I, I like what I saw in, in, in Ryan, and uh, can't wait to see the, this this fight. Switching the gears, there was other fighters there too. Uh, last week was able to be with a. Uh, Blair Cobbs. Yeah, yeah, in Vegas, right? Yeah, in Vegas. And so uh, not the greatest turnout, but like I echoed before, he still brings that same energy as if that room was, was, was full. And so very, uh, you know, very entertained by, by Blair the Flair. And so it was able to interview him as well. And I did ask him, I was like, it's the Ryan, it's the Ryan Garcia event, but are, are, you, are you planning to steal the show? Yeah. And he answered with, Every Blair the Flair cause is, is a show. <laughs> so, of course, I'm trying to steal the show. Yeah. And so... Um, most exciting man in most boxing. Most exciting man in boxing, man. And he did it again today. You know, his ex he got the, the crowd going uh, with his excitement, his high energy. And, uh, yeah, he got called out today. Uh -oh. Which was a little like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. You got Oscar and everybody in, in, the, in the crowd saying, woo, because his opponent <laughs> straight out told him, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> and so, yeah, that got the crowd going. So I'm excited for that one now, you know. Uh, it's nice to see that Blair the Flair cause isn't the only one, you know, trying to sell this 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 fight. So yeah, can't wait no, to, that's can't good, wait for that man. fight. That's good. And, and I feel like those type of, you know, high confidence uh, fighters, they need somebody to kind of match that, yeah. you know, kind of match that. I don't want to see a guy <laughs> just go in there and lay down and take a knee and get knocked out, you know. Yeah. So that's good. That's going to be good, a, a good fight. So we'll be there. We'll be calling our all-star fights, of course. Ooh. And we'll have the zone on the side, and we'll be interacting with you guys on the comments section. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Tell us what we're doing right. <laughs> but you're always going to hear, yeah. you know, no BS. You're going to hear what we see. And we'll call out people. We'll call out, you know, judges. We'll call out, you know, whatever we see. So that's yeah. what you get, man. Yeah. We don't answer to nobody, man. Just us. We'll put you against the ropes. <laughs> man yeah so that's february 14th uh all-star boxing and we're gonna have ryan garcia's headlining that card at, at anaheim honda center the zone but um yeah i hope you guys can join us um it's gonna be live on facebook all-star boxing it should start around 8 30 i'm gonna say yeah. 9 p.m it's gonna be very late hope you guys stay up there with us uh write some comments shout us out Shout out your peoples, shout out your city, shout out your family, shout out your favorite boxer, and hey. all that good stuff, man. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, all anything right. else you got? Any, anything uh, else on All-Star Boxing? I think that, I mean, we'll be having um, Mr. Chicharito. I know he's going to hate me for that uh, next, uh, in a couple of weeks, right? I think you're going to need that bat. <laughs> he's going to be the first body. one doing that ATR uh, body, <laughs> body, challenge. body challenge. Oh, yeah. So I want to preview that a little bit. Little idea that we have cooking. All right, hold on. Let me let me, let me bring it on camera. <laughs> on camera. Where are these? Hey, there it there comes. It's coming. All right, so we are issuing a ATR body challenge. Uh, anytime we have a boxer come on our show, you know what? One of us is going to take the shot, and 
you know what? I I offer myself as tribute for the first time. Now you've done it I've before done it with before. David Benavides, right? Yeah, I've done it with Mr. Super Middleweight Champion of the World. The youngest middleweight champion of the world, and so I'll do that again. I think if I could take his punch, I could take most people's punches. Damn. So, yeah. Having some difficulties right now putting this on, but <laughs> yes, this is the ATR Body Challenge open to anybody that comes on our show. And so, yeah. That's right. You want to catch a body? <laughs> Christian is offering any takers. We hit have, us up. We do have another Christian, so yeah, it could be <laughs> one of us. <laughs> yeah, man, but that's a good challenge right there. Yeah. Anybody want to take it? Hit us up. DM us against DA Ropes on Instagram. We'll be sure to respond. Yep. Yeah. And you know, one thing I want to do as well is take more phone calls from people, man. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I want to just take take some. If you got something on your chest, you got just want to just tell the people you know anything if you want to promote something i don't know about that y'all might have to pay us but <laughs> <laughs> if you got anything you know on your mind anything you want to talk about any fights that you want to promote maybe your friends fighting maybe your family members fighting maybe you're fighting hey. and you want to call and make some announcements i think we're going to open up the lines i'll probably post my number up there um so you guys can call during the show and we can have a good little uh short combo man yeah i like that because i mean Sometimes in life, you're going up against something. You're always put up against the ropes. And sometimes yeah. you're getting that out. You're helping somebody else out. So, yeah, you know, definitely. No. Definitely always out for uh, helping others. And so, um, yeah, I like that that call in for sure. So Yeah, man. Just like you guys saw with Alfredo Scarcega Jr. and um, Arnold Barbosa Jr. It was good. It was fun, man. It yeah. was enlightening, yeah. positive energy. And, man, we appreciate that. I know you guys get tired of listening to our voices. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Like but, these um, ugly guys, man. Yeah. Annoying voices. Shit. Um, a lot of people are going to be lined up, dude, to punch us. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring that uh, headgear in, too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to accidentally miss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, but like we said, we are going to have uh, Martin Santana next week. Matt gave her next week. We'll probably split that up into two episodes, but they'll be here. We had Eloy Secundino last week with mm -hmm. his coach uh george diaz we're gonna catch them friday as well all-star boxing so stay tuned to that catch the episode if you haven't you know eloy man we started talking about life stuff more than anything yeah. and i like that you know boxing is cool but at the end of the day real life is real life right yep. all these guys are going through something right and eloy yeah. like we said he's a family man um single father mm -hmm. right going through his stuff so you know, we wish him the best. We wish him the best of luck this Friday. Hopefully he gets a W. He's 1-0. and Hopefully he gets that, that second W. And it should be fun, man. Uh, like we said, um, shout out to Mr. Alex Fernandez. He'll be joining us uh, ringside for the commentary. Hey. If you guys have ever listened to him, you know, he's a high-energy guy. He brings it every night. No days <laughs> off. Russell Westbrook. You know <laughs> what it is. You can follow him at Mr. Alex Fernandez on instagram and he also has a too legit show that you guys can catch too legit show uh check it out on instagram so he's gonna be uh getting triple doubles on that commentary table man, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> up and down the court <laughs> no breaks hey that's what we like to hear but yeah shout out to mr alex fernandez and um man i think that's it right we're about an hour 30 in yeah the thing that i think we covered it all <laughs> episode 73 yeah catches this friday all-star boxing on facebook yeah, man. Yeah, it's a wrap. And it's a wrap. one last thing. We got some fresh T-shirts, fresh out the oven. If y'all want a T-shirt, <laughs> uh, hit me up, man. These are dope. I like them. Yeah. And I'm going to be rocking the Lakers one next week, so y'all can see that one. That was pretty yeah, dope. Yeah. We also have a – we'll be doing a giveaway um, sometime yeah, this, we gotta this month. Yeah, we got to do some giveaways, man. I got all these shirts here nice and packaged and ready <laughs> to go, man. We got to think of some ideas to, to give these out For sure, to man. the people. Hey. We also got uh, some signed Tyson Fury attire for sure uh -oh. that we got. So yeah, we gotta start we'll giving stuff giveaways. out. I know we have a lot of good stuff that, like for example, the the Shane mostly uh, signed the WBC sign. belt. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm not raffling that one. I'm sorry, <laughs> no, people, that but that's there's some stuff that yeah, you just gotta keep. That one stayed in the vault. Yeah. Man, <laughs> sorry guys, sorry yeah. guys. We'll have other good. Maybe good like the thousandth episode or something. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> gotta go out. You know, sixty points, man. Just like. KB. Yeah, yeah, it's true that. <laughs> if you're listening to this five years from now, <laughs> you know we're gonna be having some canas, the missing hair, that hair. Already got gonna those. Go up. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Man. Yeah, but that's that, man. Uh, great episode once again. But, you know, just takeaways that I get from this is just, man, enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw Ryan sent a very good positive message. Very good question by Chris here. Um, that's up on YouTube and on our Instagram. But, yeah, man, I, I just like to see people, you know, get together in a way and just have positive thoughts and be nicer to each other, man. A little more together. You know, every, when we talked about this, right, when yeah. um, Jesse Mandapat and uh, – Victor Rodriguez were here. Like people in this country are very like everyone just kind of keeps it themselves. Yeah, yeah. Individualistic, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you go to other countries, it's more welcoming. It's more oh, a community. Hi, yeah. how you doing? Good morning. Have a Family good evening. Place. Type of thing, you know. But with the whole COVID thing, I saw people, you know, um, kind of getting together a little more. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that continues, man. And hopefully, you know, I know from my end, I'm gonna try to keep that legacy alive. Um, big shout out to Arnold once again for taking this call. Big shout out to Alfredo Scarcego for taking the call as well. And I'm sure all of us will be keeping Kobe's uh, legacy very much alive. Hey, yeah, for me, I would say something that Kobe uh, has left the message is that, that message of family. So, I mean, if you, if you have a brother, uncle, dad, sister, mom, maybe someone that's a little bit on the colder side, doesn't <laughs> know how to show affection, you know what? Screw that. Go nah, give him a hug. I'm good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> You break that. You tell me, hey, you know I what? I ain't soft. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kobe. <laughs> so, yeah. Nah, just go go break those down and just give them a hug and, you know, just tell them that you, you appreciate them. So, that's one of the messages Kobe leaves to me. So Yeah, let's end this on a positive <laughs> note, man. Like Rihanna said, live your life. <laughs> hey, you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Just live your life, man. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. Stay tuned. Hopefully, you guys check out this episode before Friday. If you haven't, you can always catch the replay on All Star Boxing Facebook's page. Um, and that's it. We out. We'll have some special guests next week. And, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for your attention. And uh, make sure to follow us. Peace. Peace. Good episode. You already know what's happening fun guy. Hola amigos, estoy con Francisco Colga y Estrada, quiero, man quiero mandar un saludo para mis amigos de Contra las Cuerdas, que se le muchas ganas, un abrazo, muchas gracias. Shout out to Against the Ropes, you know what my, mine is, let's box bitches, it's almost fight night. Shout out to Against the Ropes, thank you for the support, keep doing your thing, you're doing, you're doing a great job, so thank you and best wishes. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Against the Ropes. Against the Ropes. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you guys for uh, the interview and uh, hope to see you again right soon. Against the Ropes, always doing the right thing. Uh, shout out to Against the Ropes, man. I appreciate you guys for having me taking the time on Charlie. Against the Ropes, number one. Freddie Roach. Thank you very much.